producer Joe here from the Working Fans Podcast. And at the Working Fans Podcast, this is just a podcast that three lifelong fans created to have a place to talk comedy and pro wrestling. Now, our comedy podcast releases every Tuesday, while our wrestling podcast releases every Thursday. We release bonus episodes under the moniker Working Fans Presents every now and then. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, any major podcast provider. The important thing is just please like, rate, review, subscribe wherever you listen to us. Now, we have started a new thing. We are now on Amazon and Audible. So those episodes release every Monday. And that's kind of going through the archives and just releasing our old episodes in a new area. So if you want to live through the process with us again, take that journey with us again, you can find us over on Amazon and Audible. Now, if you can't get enough of us in the audio form, check out our YouTube. It's youtube.com slash C slash Working Fans Wrestling Pod, or just search Working Fans Podcast on YouTube. We have the the whole archive is up there. And if you listen to the Working Fans podcast, you are more than familiar with the 531. That is our signature segment where we take your top five list on a particular subject, vote it down to a top three, and then debate it down to a top one. Now, guys, if you want to hear three guys talk shit about comedy, wrestling, life, anything, you will enjoy the Working Fans Podcast. But it's the Combat Cast with the man called Dave and Chevy. And uh, I thought uh, we'd kick it off with a little bit of review first of this past weekend's UFC fight night. And it's kind of funny, Chevy, because this card was really um, kind of under my radar a little bit, except for we had a lot of time in between this card. So I kept we kept kind of talking about Smith and Span. It felt like almost in every episode a little bit. Yeah. And now I kind of... I got excited for it in retrospect. And um, I didn't make it home until the main event, but I went back and I watched the rest of the main card. And it ended up being a pretty good card, I thought. Overall, the fight's delivered. Um, so I'm going to take um, a little bit fight by fight here, and I'll throw uh, some things I thought, and then you kick back. Uh, Joaquin Buckley kicked off tonight. Uh, he beat up Antonio Arroyo, uh, and he had a round two, uh, was it round two? But basically, uh, he took a flying knee. Um, three. I say. Yeah, it was round three, right, yeah. Arroyo caught him with a flying knee, I think, in round two. Good, one clean one, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, and I remember I was like, what a good chin Buckley's got. Even though he's been finished before, I'm like, okay, he can take a shot. But uh, I thought he looked explosive like always does um if anything uh what was interesting though was he had that bad hematoma right at the end there too one of the nastiest ones i've ever seen yeah that was was uh, was gross uh and he looked tired to me too after the fight too like he's taking some big deep breaths um but this was his third performance of the night man uh what do you think what do you think about buckley and you know, what about his future? Uh, I mean, he was on the hunt for that knockout, like, like the whole fight. Um, I think he has finishes in all of his fights. Uh, I think he wanted to talk to Dana after the fight about, yeah, I assume, you know, more money or getting the main event or yeah. something like that. You know, he's getting to that point. Um, I believe it was him that uh Kraus has they have heat between them. I uh, Buckley wanted to train at his gym or he was talking about a bunch of shit about some of his fighters or something like that. Um 
that's a I want to see that fight basically. Mm. I I like James Kraus. Um, I'm actually a big fan of his uh, fighter mm. and as a coach. So that might be good for our questions we have later. By the way, anyway, we'll get into that. Uh, Bantamweight uh, Nate Mainness, I think the guy's name was. He yeah, got a big one over Tony Gravely. And this was good because it was like. Um, I think probably caught this guy <laughs> like bad. If it had been a few more seconds in round one, it would have been done. He like, was definitely I, saved by the bell. He was, yeah. he would have been finished if it wasn't for the bell. Yeah. But Nate kept his composure. You know, he came back next to the corner and everybody did well. And, you know, dude's tough as hell. And then he caught, um, uh, gravelly and dropped him. And, um, he got the win. He's, he was lucky. But he's tough too, and he's three and zero now in the UFC. Um, what are your thoughts on this guy? Uh, I think that's the first fight of his that I remember seeing. But obviously, his comeback from adversity, you know, so he has a fighter's heart or whatever you want to call it. But um, to come back from adversity, Michael Bisping against Anderson Silva esque. Yeah. Um, and to come back and, and get a finish, uh, it was impressive. So I'll be looking out for his next fight for sure. Yeah, good good momentum going for that, that guy now. Also, I will hit that. There was a Muhammad Ali uh, PBS special on here I saw. Looked pretty good. I want to check that out. So yeah. for anybody <laughs> watching this, <laughs> I'm a big fan of Muhammad Ali. Maybe that's something we should watch. Um, Armin, I always, I'm breaking out on this guy's last name because. Sakin. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce it either. Yeah, Armin. Uh, yeah. He's a lightweight. He beat Christos, Agiagos, and he's 4 and 1 in the UFC now, where his only loss was to Isham Mashashov in his first fight, which was a fight of the night, by the way. Mm-hmm. And Isham's going through everybody. So that was his de- debut. And now the guy wants uh, Dan Hooker. And I mean, he's not he's not even a finisher though. He was three and zero all by decisions, and they basically gave him this fight, which I think was a little step down in the rankings of guys because I think they told him, you know, like you need to get finishes, and boom, he comes out and gets one. Uh, I think this guy, given he's four and one in the UFC, and his only loss is to Isham, and it was a fight at night. I think this guy could be potentially someone to watch out for in an already stacked lightweight division. Yeah. So I think he mentioned the the finishing thing. He, Sean Shelby had talked to him like, Hey, you're mm-hmm. going to have to go out and get a finish. So um, it's good. That's, that's what's going to propel his career mm-hmm. forward. You don't want to just grind out wins. Although sometimes that's what needs to be done. Um, if you want to make real money, you got to get, finishes so hopefully he sees that he can continue on i know he also wanted another shot at makachev which nobody wants to fight that guy yeah so uh um i don't think that that's a fight the ufc wants to put together again necessarily right now um but maybe down the line as far as dan hooker uh he's fighting Fighting this weekend, I believe, on 266. Uh, mm. Tough fight for him. I think we'll get to that, though. Um, if he wins his fight, I, I think he's going back up the rankings to fight someone higher. So if he loses his fight, maybe maybe uh, Armin gets, gets his wish with a Dan Hooker fight. Uh yeah, Hooker's not. Uh, oh, he is. He's on the. He's on the prelims. The yeah. prelims, yeah, against uh, Nasat Hapasat there. Uh, yeah, uh, baby, 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 Kelvin Gaston. That is yeah. a very dangerous fight for for Hooker. Yeah, that is a dangerous fight. Woo! Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so uh, also there was a nice uh, tribute to the makeup artist. Uh, CZ, Susie Fertone. Uh, everybody's really seemed to love this lady. Uh, definitely kind of give you a little behind the scenes some of these people that, uh, you 
or they have lives that we don't know about. And it's, yeah, yeah, it was uh, definitely well done on the video for that. Um, and then we had Ariane uh, Lipsky. Um, forget her nickname. She got a nickname in Poland. The Queen of Violence. The Queen of Violence. Thank you. Uh, she beat Mandy uh, Bohm. I thought this was one of her best all-around performances because some of the fights I've seen her and she struggled when she gets taken down. In this fight, she was doing the taken down. She was knocking her down. I think she knocked her down in every round, and she had top control in a couple, couple times. And um, I want to say she even almost got the finished, I think, at one point. Uh, so I just thought it was a complete performance by her here and maybe – a real kind of turn the corner. I was just going to say that. I think this is like what propels her to the next step in her career, uh, you know, where she gets a, you know, a top five opponent maybe. She looked really good. So um, if she can duplicate that and and be consistent, you know, she's a contender. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. She's definitely – uh, you know, flyweight division is a uh, very tough division, but um, yeah, maybe she'll make some waves. Uh, I was definitely impressed. Uh, Eon the Hulk, Kuda Kudaba, Kudalabra, uh, I think. Kudalabra, yeah, that's it. Uh, he fought Devin Clark. Devin Clark said he was not going to get bullied in this one. He was wrong. <laughs> he got bullied big time. Um, uh, Kudalabra. Uh, just almost gets the finish in round one. Uh, Bisping, I think, at point at one point he thought he hit him in the back of the head unintentionally at that point in round one. Yeah, that's what the, caused the knockdown. It looked like. Yeah. yeah, but then in round two, you got him down again. He had some ground and pound in that he one. He was ma- like full. He had full mount on him, and yeah, Devin Clark's dad, by the way, super loud voice, who was the corner man for him. Like you could hear him in twenty. Like get your ass up. Get your ass up. I was like, oh, man, I would not want to disappoint that guy. Yeah. Uh, Clark, though, I do have to give it to him. Showed his toughness. Guy's teeth was all mangled. Oh. And they asked him, um, you know, if you could, of course, his dad, like we just talked about the drill sergeant, it's like, you can fight, fight. He's like, all right. <laughs> so he goes back in there. And then I do want to say he got something uh, – in the final round a little bit, like with seconds left, he was hanging in there and, um, you know, gave you in some trouble. I don't think he would have got the finish, but he definitely, he looked better, but hey, whatever. The guy went for it, but uh, big win for Kudalaba. Um, this guy's always kind of in your face. Um, you know, he had a couple tough losses, but, you know, he's a, uh, what do you think about this guy? We're talking about, Oh God! What division are those guys in? Light heavyweight? Yeah, I, I don't know if he necessarily right now. He hasn't fought the caliber of opponent to justify just saying he's a contender or anything like that. So, right. I mean, now maybe he gets a, a top five guy or you know top eight guy, something like that. Um, I don't, I don't know where Devin Clark's ranked. I, I, his skills are good, but he, he's not going to be winning the title, you know, in the next year or so. so right. Uh, Kudalabra, his gimmick is interesting. You know, as Hulk hmm. and he, he's always bullying people, like you said, yeah. at the weigh-ins or whatever. I think. I think he was salt bang on uh, Devin Clark, which is pretty, uh, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's comical. It's not, it's not the most cringy thing we've seen that way, and I guess <laughs> um, he didn't smash a snake on the uh, snake on the ground like Triple C or anything. But yeah. um, I don't know. I like I it, the guy has interesting fights for sure. So. Yeah, he's a guy I think that uh, he's going to be an entertaining guy to watch, but I don't know if he's ever going to be on that championship level the way he fights. He fights very emotional. and um, But, you know, he's a guy that Dana or somebody like that would probably like, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, all right, main event, Anthony Smith, Ryan Spann. I believe I, I said this on another podcast too. I thought I thought Anthony Smith was going to pull this off, um, but I thought the way he would do it would be he was going to drag it out. He was going to use his skills and his experience, and then be able to pull it off probably late in the fight, round four or five. Nope. Instead, he looked better than he has in a long time. He he caught Span early. He looks hands look great, and then on the ground he looked awesome. And there was one sprawl exchange too, where Spant kind of caught him with a knee in the the gut, and Smith didn't panic at all, of course, because of that experience. Totally get control. And the next thing you know, he's back in control, dominating. Uh, he gets to win. Super emotional after the fight. Um, yelling at uh, Span, they quickly squashed it i know he said afterwards that you know he didn't feel like his respect was given to him but he also admitted he, maybe i'm making a mountain out of a molehill and maybe i just was on some michael jordan shit and needed that to you know perform if that's the case uh i think somebody I, oh yeah i saw somebody in the comments somewhere on instagram i wish i'd give him the credit but they said new mythical fighter pissed off Anthony Smith. <laughs> so maybe uh, I thought this was absolutely his best performance. And uh, I know the Hulk, Tuta Lava, actually wanted to call him out afterwards. And Smith was like, no, <laughs> we're not going backwards. But I, yeah. I understand what he's doing. I like him, but no. <laughs> what do you think, Snex? I know he I had think, a call out. Yeah. Uh, I, it was a. Uh... Rackage, right? Yeah, was rackage, thought, yeah, and I believe you know before the interview was even done, Rackage said, "I'm available in December." So that's right. That's you right. know, um, that's that's a good. Like Anthony Smith said, someone ahead of him. You know, he's he's later on in his career. He's he's getting up there in age, so he needs to start making his push towards the title again if he's going to get it. Um, his hands have looked so good the last two fights. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan Spann is a very dangerous opponent, and Anthony Smith showed good composure when he stunned him. He didn't you know, blitz in. He, he wobbled him a couple times before he finished him. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Anthony Smith. I'm um, I'm glad he got the win. It's bumping the road for Ryan Spann because I think he has the skills to become champion at some point as well. Now, um, that was that card. I do want to point out we had a question from Randy Osga. I think he asked me last week, but we'll get him on the show. Um, he wants to know who we think are some of the most underrated fighters in UFC, Bellator, uh, men and women. Uh, we kind of put this together last minute, so I only got a couple here. But uh, a couple guys, uh, I think we just talked about this in the previous episode. Derek Brunson has been very underrated because he's really come on strong lately, and he's looked like a guy who could be back in that title position. I know you said fuck him <laughs> off the air, but Bill <laughs> Davis – I had said I think he had the potential to give Romero problems. I meant that. I didn't think he'd win, though. <laughs> um, I was so, shocked. Yeah. So, surprise, surprise. Scott Coker, big fan of Romero. No, he thinks Romero's going to bounce back and be a problem. Um, we'll see. Um, sometimes that happens. Yeah, so that Bellator gets them, and then you think they're going to be a star there because they were a star, and then they don't end up happening. They flop. Benson Henderson, I think, was an example of that. Love Benson, but then didn't translate over there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so those couple guys, and then um, we were talking about, like, uh, women, and we were thinking, like, everybody was pretty fairly underrated, and I was trying to think of uh, Bellator's women division, and just because she's under my – Radar, uh, Juliana Vasquez, who just won the flyweight title over there. She's underrated in my book because I've got to watch one of her fights. She beat McFarlane there, and I, 
I did not even realize that because I was a big fan of hers. Uh, some of the stuff I loved her entrances she was doing, like when they went to those Hawaii cards. Mm-hmm. But I believe uh, there was somebody we were just talking about that you might have on this list. Uh, yeah, the the uh, baby Kelvin Gaslam. Yep. Uh, Hackrast. I don't know how to pronounce this name, but everyone keep an eye on him. He's up and coming. He's been you know demolishing people. Yeah, he can do it all. He's good everywhere. His hands are super quick. Um, I think he's, you know, on his way up. Tough fight for Dan Hooker. So this is a good uh, measuring stick for for the uh, baby Bumblebee, as we call uh, Kevin Gaston. But yeah, uh, I was also thinking about Tisha Torres. Yes, but she she's been injured. She recently just had a fight against uh, Angela Hill, her second fight, um, and uh, she won. So I, I think if she can stay healthy, she's on her way up to a you know contender position as well. So uh, I don't know if she's quite there. Her wrestling skills are good, but her hands have looked good in her last couple of fights too. So. And then uh, in the welterweight division for men, Bilal Muhammad. I've talked about him a little uh-huh. bit uh, before on previous episodes, but I'm pretty high on uh, on Bilal's skills. Uh, also, great Instagram and or, or great Twitter if you guys are on Twitter. So, um, I think he, he has good wrestling, but uh, he can let his hands go too. So. Keep an eye out for him. I'll tell you a guy, too, I want to add on to this list, too. Rob Font at the uh, Bantamweight division. I don't think he's mentioned as a big name yet in that division, but he's putting it on people right now. Right. He beat Cody Garbrandt. Yeah. Right. And he, so, so, I mean, he's he just beat a big name. And so I think, like, that doesn't always translate. Now, you don't always just sort of get that big name back. So, uh, but I think Rob Font, I, I think Cody's was looking good. And I think that Rob Font beat a good Cody Garbrandt. I don't think he beat a wash Cody Garbrandt. So I think um, I think that says something. I, I think Rob Font's a guy we're going to be watching more of. And I think a guy you had mentioned you were a fan of too, James Krause, a guy yes. who was willing to fight people in other weight classes. I think he falls under the radar too. And um He's somebody, uh, a fight with him in Buckley, I'd be all in on that, like you said. Um, I don't know if that's a good matchup for Buckley because I think, um, you know. Um, Krause has the better stand-up, I think. He's less explosive but more technical. More, more technical, yeah. And I think he, I think he's a better all-around, too. Like, mm-hmm. I think he's more likely he could take it on the ground. And, you know, I think Buckley – I don't think that's a good fight from at this stage in his career. I think Kraus is again the point of this underrated, and I think Kraus could definitely uh, you know fight upward a little bit. Mm-hmm. But and uh, maybe Anthony Smith's underrated after this weekend too. <laughs> right. I, I I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought he was on the decline because he lost a few in a row after uh, after his title defense uh, or his title lost. shot, but yeah. Um, I'm glad to see he's doing well. Same. Now, um, we got UFC 266 this weekend. Um, let's see here. We got in my notes here. Here is... Blah, blah, blah. All right. So, opening the uh, card, we got Jessica Andras and Cynthia, Cynthia Cavillo. Um, women's flyweight. I think Andraz is going to be the one to win here. I think the power is going to be the difference. Andraz has knocked out people at Bantamweight. <laughs> She's a beast. Um, I got her winning this, in my opinion, TKO round two. What do you think is going to happen here? Yeah, I think uh, Cynthia's wrestling is... is a big part of her game where she can control where the fight goes. But like you said, Andrade is so powerful. Um, I think she 
she handles, she stuffs takedowns and she lets her hands go and she be hurt in second round TKO probably. I can see that now. Uh, like I said, I agree with that. So now we got this one we might disagree on a little bit because um, I'm very second guessing myself here. Uh, we got Curtis Braids uh, against uh, Josario Rosenstruck. And, and um, Riker, Rosenstruck, heavy hands, blades, wrestler, take you down, ground and pound you. Um, although Rosenstruck had knocked out Dos Santos at one point and actually looked decent with his striking. I got Blades winning this, I think. I'm going to go TKO round three with ground and pound. I think he's going to eventually keep taking him down, and he'll eventually get the ground and pound finish. But, man, I could see Rosenstruck catching him on the chin with one, or I could see it just being a grind-out decision, too. Um, yeah, I, I think Nganu is the only person that's beating Blades at this point. Um, Rosenstruck is a good striker. Right? I think he gets taken mm-hmm. down and submitted or ground and pound early mm-hmm. in the fight. He... I, if I remember correctly, his like get up from takedowns is Derek Lewis esque. Mm. So he's going to give up his back or something and, and get taken, choked out or something. Yeah, Derek Lewis did catch Blades himself, by the way, too, besides Nagata. But I think those are the only people that have caught. And those are the two heaviest hitters. Yeah. The heavy, right, yeah. Um, Nick Diaz versus Robbie Lawler. <clears throat> we don't know what we're really getting here, but I think we're gonna get arrested. Nick Diaz, yeah, and fireworks. That's what we're getting. I, I think Nick Diaz, I, I have a feeling who's going by a feeling. Obviously, we haven't seen him. I think he's gonna be the Nick of old. I think he's gonna have gone down a little bit. I think he's still one of the greats, but I don't think. He's quite where he used to be, and I think Nick is probably going to still be in that one of those top five guys. And I think Nick gets it done, volume punches, TKO. I'm going to go with round three. Uh, I agree with that assessment 100%. I, mm. All those wars that Robbie's been in, Nick was home smoking weed and right, right, right. Out, not getting punched in the face. So, yeah. Uh, He's going to just pour it on in volume, uh, you know, maybe weather a few punches, dodge a few punches. He's going to land uh, something to stagger. Robbie, swarm him, get him out of there. Third round, probably. Now we got flyweight action, women's flyweight. Shavanko versus Lauren Murphy. Valentina. It's usually just a question of when. She's so technical. I'm just going to guess and put it. She's going to put it on her. She's going to take her down. It's going to beat her up. And I'm going to say she gets her out of here around two. Uh, Laura Murphy is tough. Very tough. She can take a beating, um, which is good because she's going to have to take one. Uh, I, I'm going to say decision. Unanimous okay. decision, maybe maybe some ten eight rounds. Okay, well, for our sake, I yeah. hope that that goes for on. her sake. I, I hope yeah. it's a finish, but yeah. And this, I'm just thinking of, as we watch this later in the evening. <laughs> if we're right, though, we're gonna get finishes up until that point. So yeah. now, all right, here's the big one: uh, men's featherweight. Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, the champ, versus Brian Ortega. Um, this is a three-person race, I feel like, in this division. There's so many good people, but I feel like that upper echelon is Max Holloway, Volkanovsky, and Brian Ortega. And although Holloway looked on another level in his uh, last fight, I do think Ortega looked really good against Korean Zombie, like much improved on the strikes and everything. I think 
if he's constantly – I think Brian Ortega is a guy, if you go back and watch his earlier fights too, he's constantly making leaps and bounds improvements. Yeah, big jumps, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about Volkanovski. Uh, he did the adjustments, and he looked well in the Holloway fight, and he arguably lost, but he's made adjustments here and there, so he's always going to be, I think, one of the top guys. He is the champ. Maybe I underrate him. That being said, I think we're going to get a new champ. I think Ortega's going to get it done. I think it's going to go back and forth. I think it's going to be a war, but I think Ortega's going to get a late round. I'm going to go fourth round submission, and I think the submission game is going to be the difference maker here. Yeah, I like Volkanovski, but I love Bryant, so Mm -hmm. I'm really hoping uh, that he gets a finish. I would love to see him versus Max again just to see that that improvement that he's had because Max put it on him. You know, mm-hmm. he was teaching him how to dodge his punches in the, in the oh, yeah. Point. So, um, I'd love to see that mm-hmm. one again. Like you said, vastly improved. Also, Max has never looked better himself. So, uh, that's a fight I want to see. That being said, Volkanovski is the champ. He's a very tough out. Uh, he just finds ways to win. He's powerful. Um, I think his wrestling plays right into Brian's hands, though. So I, I think this may be a striking match till someone gets tired or wobbled and it ends up in a scramble. And then I favor favor Brian, you know, getting a hold of his neck. Uh, I don't know what round it'll be in that sometime later in the fight, but I'm hoping Brian gets a hold of his neck and uh, puts him to sleep or he taps. Hmm. I'm with you. I think we're going to get it. Um, and I'm kind of hoping for that as well. Now, a couple undercard fights. We talked about this. Uh, Nazarat, I believe, is uh, against Dan Hooker. Um, yep. He says. Tough fight for Hooker, but I, I think I think Hooker is hungry enough. The thing I do wonder about is Hooker's had some tough losses recently. We talked about momentum in the past, the mental game of fighting. I like Hooker. I'm going to make an emotional pick, and I'm going to go with Hooker. I think he gets it done here. Uh, might be a decision though. I, I think he needs this one and. Skills wise, he has the skills to be Nazarat, but it's a tough fight. I think matchup wise, it's a tough fight. Uh, I think a slower, you know, technical fight would favor Hooker. I don't think that's going to be this. Uh, I think he's going to get swarmed and get caught with something and pr- probably get knocked out. I, I hope not because I don't want to see his decline. I think he belongs up there in that top five. I feel kind of bad that he's fighting on the prelims, although this card is super stacked. So it is. that's what happens. But he belongs up there in that top five, and he's fighting an up and comer, which the USC puts you is uh, that's the start of them putting you out to pasture, basically. So I'm pulling yeah. for him as well. Now we got another Bantam Way fight on this card, too. Uh, I just want to profile here. Malon Marais versus Marab. I always mess up on his last Devalishvili. name. Devalishvili. Devalishvili. So, now, if you look at these last couple fights here, Marab is on a one, two, three, six fight win streak. So, you talk about, like, we you like to book this. Marais who was on fire in the UFC and fought for the title, the vacated title against Cejudo, lost that fight to TKO. Then he won a split decision against Aldo. The Dana White didn't think he won, if you remember. He didn't win that fight. And then since then, he got TKO'd by Corey Sanhagen and before mentioned, TKO'd by by Rob Font. Now, we're putting him in here with (laughs) Marab. I feel like this is... They're setting Marais up to get possibly booted out of here. He's cut after this fight, yeah. Yeah. Um, that being said, I like Marais. I always thought he was a good fighter. Uh, he's got good skills. I really like Marab, and I think Marab 
it's just I think he's going to be one of those guys. He might be an underrated guy too. He, he might be another guy because his wrestling is just insane. His cardio is insane. And the guy is just, there's nobody, I think, any more enthusiastic to fight than Marab. Like, he's willing to die for this. Uh, Marlon is a quitter. So, in the title fight against Cejudo, Cejudo yep. he was winning that fight. He hurt Cejudo's leg, and Cejudo could barely stand on the leg. And he couldn't finish that fight. And then Cejudo just broke him. Um, Marab's whole thing is takedowns and pressure. He's going to take him down a thousand times and break his will to fight. Mm. And uh, Marlon's going to get caught after this, as he should. You think late finish, Marab? Uh, I don't boring decision. He just takes him down and he gets up. He takes him down and gets up. I, I don't think he'll get finished, but I think you're going to see his corner man yelling at him again, you know. Uh, you know, get it together. You need to be in this fight. This is, you know, this five minutes is your whole career, blah, 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 all that. Right. I think you're going to see that in between. Well, you won't because it's on the prelims, but Imagine it, because that's what they'll be saying. <laughs> I was looking at Marab here. He, he has those six wins in a row. They are all by decision, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, on the prelims, the fight before the Hooker and Nasra fight is Chris Dukakis. Mm -hmm. uh, keep an eye out for him. He's another uh, person I like to watch in the heavyweight division. He's fighting Shamil. Uh, I can't. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the guy's last name. We just call him Shamil. But uh, mm -hmm. could be fireworks in that fight as well. He's 3-0 in the UFC. All finishes. And he's had two performances of the night in two of the three fights. Yeah. Shamil's so. going to sleep. He's a wrestler. But uh, you see some clinching and he's going to get caught. Exiting the clinch with something, I think. All right, Christopher Dukakis. Chris yep. Dukakis. We'll look out for that one. All right, my man. Uh, I think that's it. We covered. We got the question. We reviewed. We previewed. Um, anything you want to add before we get out? Enjoy the fights. Enjoy the fights. Okay. Great, great card. We'll be out. Thank you.